guys, hopefully, um, hopefully this video got some of what I said in the last video. Um, it just kind of shut off. I ran out of room. Um, it always seems to happen, like, right in the middle of the video, though. But, um, yeah. We're gonna continue what, um, I was talking about. So, God can speak in many ways, if I didn't see, say that in this last video. Um, we read in Joel 2.28, right, it said, And it shall come to pass afterward, and I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions. Okay, when we see people prophesying, um, sorry guys, there's like a pop-up on my screen. There we go. When we see people prophesying, um, for anyone that has questioned that, um, I'm speaking as someone that has questioned a lot of things as well, um, based on my upbringing, so I understand what that's like, and I'm coming from that perspective, but we actually see in the Bible, it says, your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and then it says, your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see visions, so we see that these ways that God speaks, they're actually in the Bible, a lot of people want to go based off that verse in Hebrews and say, God doesn't speak anymore. Um, essentially, the canon is closed is what people will say. And I cannot tell you exactly what that means, but I believe it's basically saying, you know, God God only speaks through the Bible. He doesn't speak outside the Bible. Um, but we see here in the book of Joel, it says that people shall prophesy dream dreams and see visions that God does speak through dreams and visions. Um, so I just wanted to go to this verse particularly. Um, so if we go back to the verse in Hebrews, technically, if this verse in Hebrews is saying that God doesn't speak today, um, technically, that verse and the verse in Joel would be a contradiction. But we know the Bible doesn't contradict itself. And we also have a verse in the book of John. And this verse says, it's John 10. And it says, um, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. It's John 10, 27. Now, could this verse be talking about the Lord's voice in terms of like, like in the Bible? Yes. Could this verse also be talking about God's voice, um, not within just the confines of the Bible? Yes. Could it be talking about both? Yes. Um, but again, technically, if this verse in Hebrews is saying God doesn't speak today, he doesn't speak outside the Bible, um, technically, if that verse does mean that, then that verse in Hebrews, the verse in Joel, and the verse in John are contradicting each other. So if we see that verse in Hebrews and we say, okay, well, if the book of Joel says this about God speaking, right? God speaking through dreams can speak through visions. Um, then we go back to the book of John, right? And this says, my sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. And it says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. But if we compare these verses, the one from Hebrews, the one from Joel, and the one from John, and if we say that Hebrews means that God doesn't speak today, well, then, like I said, it'd be contradicting that. So, if we say that verse in Hebrews, if we say, okay, this verse is not talking about God not speaking today. This verse is talking about how God spoke through the prophets, um, you know, pointing to Jesus. 
He communicated his, his, his will, which is ultimately prophesying about Jesus. The prophets were prophesying about Jesus and they were pointing to Jesus, right? There's so many references of Jesus that we see in different books, whether it's Jeremiah, whether it's Isaiah, right? But the prophets were speaking based on that. But that was before Jesus came to this earth and died on the cross. So when Jesus came, God has in these last days spoken unto us through Jesus. His will, right? We said his will, John 640, is that I would see the Son and believe in him and he will raise him up at the last day. And so if we see it in that way and we believe, okay, the Bible is absolutely true, right? and it does not contradict itself, then when we see it, that verse in the book of Joel and we see that verse in the book of John and we compare it to the verse in Hebrews, then we can understand that when we see that verse in Hebrews, that verse is talking about um, before Jesus came to this earth, God communicated through the prophets but he hath in these last days, he has spoken unto us through Jesus, not saying God doesn't speak anymore today, but saying that he spoke through Jesus, through his son. Okay. The Bible talks about, you know, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. A lot of people use that verse to say God still speaks. They also use the verse in John, but I just wanted to break these down and I wanted to share this with you biblically, what all the verses say about God speaking. I don't think this is every single verse in the Bible, but these are the main ones that refer to God speaking. We're going to break down the verse now in um, Revelation that we see. That pertains to um, God speaking. Um, that a lot of people will use to say, you know, God, God doesn't speak. Um, he can't speak. Um, in this way where um, like it's painted as a problem for people to talk about their relationship with God or if they felt God leading them to do something or so there is a book in Revelation excuse me there's a verse in Revelation that says you know it talks about if anyone adds to the words of this book right Again, a lot of people interpret this in this way of if you add to the words of this book, if you talk about God speaking or he showed you this or taught you this, a lot of people paint that in that way, like someone has done something wrong that you can't believe, like God speaks, that, you know, this verse, you know, this verse is really serious. But as I mentioned in another video, what this verse is referring to, what do the words say? It says, if anyone asks the words of this book, of this book, I've mentioned why this is so, like, so important. But what is happening in Christianity is um, the Bibles are being altered, right? The Bibles are being altered. Words are being added. Words are being taken out. Context is being changed to show a works-based salvation. But when that is happening, the pure word of God is being altered. It is being changed in that way. Now, do I believe God can work through um, different Bibles, through the word of God? Yes, I do believe that. But I will say, like when I was not reading from the King James Bible, there was so much confusion. Things can be really muddy. Um, there is this confusion when it comes to is salvation um, by grace through faith or is it by works based on a lot of the verses um, 
just the words that are added, the words that are changed, um, the words that are altered. Now, maybe not everyone is going to have have a struggle with that, but I know for some people, they definitely have. When I started reading like the King James Bible, it was like everything that God had been trying to show me and teach me, like everything confirmed, everything aligned in a way where I did not have when I was reading through other Bibles and I didn't know it was because you can look at different verses and there have been words changed. There have been words taken out of context. There have been words added, subtracted, etc. This is what I believe this verse is referring to is if anyone adds to the words of this book, you know, cause the Bible the Bible is so sacred and special, and it's really important that the words are not changed, and the message of the gospel especially, because what is happening is when specifically the gospel is being twisted, right? And what does Paul say? He says, you know, um, he says, if we are an angel from heaven, preach another gospel to you, let them be accursed. You know, and he says, the one who throweth you into confusion does not cometh from the one who calls you. And we know that God is not the author of confusion, but a peace has in all the churches of the saints. So what is happening is the Bibles, they're being changed. They're being altered. It's perverting the message of the gospel where people are being taught that they need certain works or to trust in their works not trusting completely in Christ but as Ephesians 2 8 to 9 says for us by grace through faith you've been saved not by works else any mention both it is the gift of God and many people don't understand in Christianity because the gospel has been so twisted that salvation is a free gift. Eternal life is a free gift. You know, I had a friend that she had grown up in kind of a religious environment, but, um, she was either like agnostic or atheist. And, um, you know, she had gone to church or she had like religious family. I hope you can hear me above the noise of the train but there was one day you know where I was just talking to her about God and um I all of a sudden just started talking to her about the gospel I saw she was like open to it because she had watched family members go through things and um uh it was hard for her to understand who God is essentially not only when she has seen family members go through such immense suffering and pain, but also when she had been taught this religious view of God, you know, um, and I had prayed, you know, to, for my, for my friend to be safe. Um, she had been through so much. And so I was sitting in the car and, um, I just start talking to her about, you know, what the gospel really is. And, um, I was just amazed because she looked at me and she said, no one's ever um, like explained it to me that way before. I'm telling you guys like that just, that was heartbreaking to me. And there's so many Christians that we've grown up in religion. We've grown up hearing about God, but so many of us, we, and I'm talking about myself. We don't truly know the love of God. We, we, to some extent, have we fully comprehended the free gift of eternal life? A lot of us have not been taught that. I would even say vast majority of Christianity, they backload works onto the gospel. Um, and this is throwing so many people into fear, anxiety, religious bondage, where people are not knowing um, that when they have put all their faith in Christ, they are sealed, they are secure. As the book of Ephesians says, and so many people are being led, like I said, to this place of fear, this place of anxiety, um, this constant fear that they're going to lose their salvation. And not just that, but God's love being distorted in that way.
this is why, you know, I believe part of why it says in the book of Revelation, you know, if anyone asks the words of this book, because it's not just this simple thing of people sometimes people are trying to make it easier to understand because the KJV it can have a lot of kind of older language. But sometimes in Christianity it is not just people trying to make wording easier to understand. Like the message, the whole message is being twisted so often. Works are being backloaded. People are not knowing the security of their salvation. And for anyone to speak up on that, it's like, you know, people are um very kind of combative toward that. Um, but this is what is happening. This is what's happening on a wide scale in Christianity. And I can speak that from personal experience because that is the, the fear and anxiety I lived in for so long since I was literally five years old. And I had been taught the real gospel, but I had been exposed both online and other Christian environments to these false workspace gospels and it threw me into a place of confusion threw me into a place of fear and anxiety um that only god could pull me out of that and teach me his word and help me understand what is the gospel and even what is happening in christianity because this isn't a theological what i call you know a theological um struggle per se um nor is it something that we resolve intellectually. It is literally spiritual. When we are talking about false teachings, it talks about the spirit of error in the book of First John, you know. That's why I get so, like, adamant about these things. Because, um, like I said, I lived in that fear and anxiety for 18, 19 years, guys. <laughs> Thinking it was normal because of what's taught in Christianity, and it wasn't. And like I said, God was the only person that could pull me out of that and give me understanding. But when we go into this topic of God speaking, okay, um, you know, I didn't come from a charismatic background. I didn't come from Pentecostal church none of that, you know, um, I came from a pretty conservative, um, upbringing, you know, I wasn't even exposed to like modern worship music till like I got like older till I was probably in like my high teens, like 18, 19. So, um, you know, I come from a pretty conservative background. I come from a background where, you know, you're not necessarily taught that, God speaks per se, um, or speaks to people individually. I wasn't exposed to those kind of teachings till I was going through really heavy depression and, um, suicidal thoughts. And I would hear about other people talking about their relationship with God. Um, and I was just very curious. I was also somewhat skeptical. Um, but I was also very, very curious. And, um, I don't know what my spiritual experiences were like when I was like younger. I feel like they were a lot different than kind of when I got older and kind of was in that place of like not really knowing who God was um, and viewing him from that religious lens. But um, I will say, you know, when you're, when you're a child, you know, it's like you're open to a lot more things in a way where your faith is a lot stronger. It's it's like this childlike faith that you have to believe in things. But as we get older, we become more and more skeptical. Um, and so for me, as I would hear about people talking about God speaking, you know, I would have a sense of skeptical skeptic skepticism. I was going to say skeptability, but I think that's a word. But I would have a sense of skepticism, and I would be like, oh, you know, does does God really speak? Um, God doesn't really speak, does he? Hmm. But it would definitely be more of a curiosity for me. Um, but if God did speak, you know, I wanted, I wanted to know his voice. And so I just, 
became more open to the idea of God speaking. Um, I guess if I'm going to be really, really honest um, about what I was going through, I don't want me sharing this to discount any credibility of what I have said because, yes, I did go through this, but um, for some people, they will say that, oh, because I went through this, then um, God doesn't really speak, like you were going through all this, which I guess I'll get into it, but at the time, at the time I was hearing, um, really dark voices at the time, um, that were just very insulting and they would tell me to hurt myself and different things like that. Um, so that's what I was going through at the time. I was in a really, really deep depression. I was strong with suicidal thoughts and, um, I didn't know if God spoke or not, but I was like, if God does speak, like I want, I want to know his voice, you know, cause I was just absolutely um, miserable and felt like I was just hanging on by a thread and, um, yeah, let's just get it. Let's just get into this further. Um, here's the thing within the mental health system, um, you will have people tell you, you know, um, per se, God doesn't speak, or they'll look at you a certain way. I remember when I felt like God was leading me in my life during that time, you know, things felt very spiritual. But I remember being looked at a certain way. <laughs> I remember being looked at a certain way um, when it came to that. And I'm telling you, you know, God did confirm, you know, it wasn't because there was like something wrong with me that I thought God was speaking. Like that actually was God. God does speak. Um, whether or not you believe that, you know, it's up to you, but I provided verses. Um, but yeah, you know, people will look at you a certain way if you, if you talk about that. Um, and like I mentioned in the last video, if you do experience different things spiritually, whether it's God speaking and God doesn't always speak through an, like an audible voice that you can hear. Most people, they don't hear that, but I'm not going to say there are people that haven't experienced his voice in that way, but I will just say, God, most of the time it's, it's a still small voice as the Bible says, and I can go into that in a little bit. But anyways, that's what I was going through at the time when I knew, you know, God was the only one that could like help me through that. And I didn't know what was happening. Um, but I wanted to know God's voice. And I just believed that he speak, that he spoke and that he wanted to speak to me and lead me and guide me in my life. And man, understanding God through that lens of relationship. I mean, it just, it changed my life. You know, I used to look at God through this very religious lens. It was this very fear-based lens, this very anxiety-based lens. It was this lens of God is distant and far away. God has forgotten me in the pain and suffering that I'm going through. And when I started understanding God through this lens of relationship, that God wanted a relationship with me, it just completely changed everything. And I just want to say that's the same for any of you, every single one of you. You know, God, he wants a relationship with you. That's what he wants with you. I always say, you know, it's not religion that brings healing. It's not religion that sets you free. It's, it's relationship, right? Truly, truly. Um... It's religion that um has its living in fear, anxiety, or a lot of exhaustion. Trying to gain our Father's love and our approval instead of understanding that's how he already sees us. We've been accepted in the beloved um, because of all that Jesus has done. 
And so I just, I want to encourage you. I know everyone has had different experiences when it comes to God speaking. And I know that this is quite a somewhat complex topic to talk about, but I just want to encourage you to view God in that lens that God loves you so much. He wants to have a relationship with you, to lead you, to guide you. And, and to believe that he can speak or that he he does want to talk to you. He does want to lead you and guide you. And it's from this place of security of his love. And whereas I would watch videos and you know, people would have prayers of, you know, um, God speak to me when I'm ready. I've said this in other videos, but God, he wants us to come just as we are to him. In the brokenness you feel, in the pain you feel, um, in things that feel beyond your strength and what you can get through. He wants you to come just as you are and to know that he's always waiting in his love for you. That his love is secure for you. That nothing can separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It wasn't, you know, God wanted to lead me and guide me when I was at that point that I felt like I was supposed to be for God. Because that's what we're taught in religion. But it was that God wanted me just as I was. He wanted me to run to him just as I was. Because he wants to... Embrace you in his love, where his love is bringing healing. His love is bringing restoration. His love is changing you. And so understand that wherever you are in your life, whatever you've done, whatever um, you've been through, God wants you just as you are. He wants you to come just as you are. And we have to understand, you know, this is ultimately the gospel. That he offers salvation slash eternal life as a free gift. Not because of any work of ourselves, not because of anything we have done, but because of all that he has done because of his great love for us. And he invites us to um, receive that free gift. And not only that, but to know his love, to know relationship with him. And I've said it before, but I really believe what is happening within this kind of contrast between religion and between this religious lens of looking at God, where it's like, no, God doesn't speak. But then I just read the scriptures, right? Um, what I believe is happening on a deeper level within Christianity is Satan does not want you to know relationship with God, doesn't want you to understand that relationship you have with him, doesn't want you to understand the love he really has for you, because that's where healing happens. That's where restoration happens. Um, so many good things come out of that. But religion, you know, religion, um, often it leads us into exhaustion, weariness, um, fear, anxiety, um, where we are trying, like I said, to gain our Father's love instead of understanding um, He has that for us. And when I talk about God's love, I mean you not living in fear that you're going to lose your salvation. You understanding your salvation is held secure in His hands. That you don't have to live in fear, but we have this hope as an anchor for the soul, sure and steadfast. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for all you've done, God. We thank you for all you've done on the cross, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. I'm sorry. I just get very frustrated um, sometimes when, when I hear different religious teachings because... Uh, 
They try to keep you from understanding that relationship that you have with God. That way he sees you. That way he loves you. And it's the enemy doing that through religion. And through especially perverting the gospel. That clothing works. Because as I always say, if you don't understand the gospel and you don't understand the eternal security in Christ, it's very hard to understand God's love for you if you are living in the sphere that he's just going to take salvation away from you. Instead of that, you are his child. He holds to care. What did I read in the book of John? It says, you know, my sheep um, hear my voice and they follow me. And no one can pluck them out of my hand. That's what Jesus said. To understand no one, no one can pluck you out of Jesus' hand. That you are secure in Christ and, and your salvation is secure in Christ. Um, and understanding that, and understanding your relationship with God in that way, um, that your salvation is secure. Now we come boldly to the throne of grace, right? As the Bible says that we may obtain grace, grace and mercy to help us in time of need. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to go into is how God speaks. Many of you have probably already experienced God's voice um, many, many times in your life, I'm sure. But a lot of us, we view God's voice in a certain way. So like I said, most of the time, God's voice is not this audible voice. Sorry, I didn't know if it was still filming. Um, we see, um, when it comes to Elijah, I believe it's Elijah, I get them confused, like Elijah and Elisha, but God's voice is not found in the earthquake. It's not found in these big, um, signs per se that are, that are happening, um, at that, at that time. It wasn't found in the earthquake, um. But his voice, it was a still, small voice. And God's voice, the Holy Spirit's voice, because we have the Holy Spirit dwelling inside of us. We, we literally have the Spirit dwelling inside us. So when we read the Bible, right, the Lord is giving us understanding. But also, his literal Spirit dwells within you. So wherever you go... God goes with you. His spirit dwells within you. Um, he can minister to you. He can teach you things, lead you, guide you um, through his spirit. Because his spirit lives inside us. And the verse is coming up. You know, those that are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So he leads us by his spirit. So for people to, you know, talk about, oh, what's wrong, you know, when people say, God, you know, led me to do this or that. Well, he leads us by his spirit. His literal spirit dwells within us. And I, I say, you know, the Bible should be our absolute, um, our absolute authority. And that we look in there to see what God is showing us, that it comes from his word. So we can distinguish his voice. And the more we know the word, the more we know who he is. But we, we, we have to have a correct foundation of what the gospel is. Because otherwise, everything's going to be off. But the more we know God's word, the more not only will scripture come to mind, um, which is one way that God speaks, but we will be able to distinguish and discern his voice from the enemies or from um, kind of any other interference that might be coming in. But I share that, I share that verse, you know, those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Um, just to show, you know, um, if someone's being led by his Spirit, it's not wrong. God does lead by his Spirit, right? The Bible talks about worshiping him in spirit and truth. And Jesus says, you know, um, the time will come when. Um, people will worship him in spirit and truth. 
and we have his Holy Spirit dwelling within us. And so, um, when people, you know, act like that's wrong, that God speaks or God leading and guiding, you know, um, his spirit, his very spirit dwells within us. And the Bible says, you know, um, Jesus says, you know, I will, I will give the comforter, which is known as the Holy Spirit, and he will lead and guide us into all truth. So again, I'm just using scripture to confirm this and show this and how God's speaking. People saying God's speaking is not wrong. It, it is scripturally accurate. Um, and for anyone that has ever been skeptical of that or close off from that, um, it's okay if you believe God speaks. It's okay. Um, there's so much fear kind of from this religious base lens that people are taught. Um, and I just, I really wanted to use scripture to show this and just help you understand, you know, God wants a relationship with you. It's Satan that uses religion to try to distort that. And I just, I hope and pray that you're understanding that, that God, he, he wants a relationship with you. He wants a relationship with every single one of you. And it, it's not this fear-based thing, right? There's no fear in love. But perfect love casts out fear. Jesus is perfect love casts out fear. Excuse me. That's how God loves you so much. And he wants you to come boldly to him. He wants you to come just as you are, um, to receive his love for you, to know that not only is your salvation, but his love is secure for you. Um, and for him to teach you his word, to teach you who he is, to minister to you in this life, to help you in the things that you are going through. And we receive his spirit by believing the gospel. As it says in the book of Ephesians, um, after you believed, after you heard the word of truth, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And so I can't say for sure when works are being backloaded onto the gospel, if people are trusting in their works and they're not putting all their faith in Christ, whether they receive the Holy Spirit or not, you know, I, I can't say for sure. I don't know quite how it works, but I will say we receive the Holy Spirit by believing the gospel, putting all our faith in Christ, right? The Father's will is out. Let's see the Son and believe in him and he will raise him up at the last day. But it's really important for us to know the gospel because it has been twisted so much. Um, and when we know the gospel, it's like God's spirit will confirm with that word you are reading or even as i'm speaking some of these things will confirm when you hear people talk about the gospel it's like his spirit will confirm in your spirit and um will confirm with your spirit and you will feel his peace you will feel that confirmation whereas when we hear false gospels there's confusion there's um fear there's anxiety etc okay so that's why it's it's important to to know the gospel um because when we do um it's like we can distinguish from god's voice better and what he is showing us and teaching us because the enemy he is the one that wants to come in and interfere with things he wants to twist the gospel he wants to twist your understanding of god he wants to get you in a place of fear and anxiety he wants to get you in a place of religious bondage that's what the enemy does and I talk about him so much because what I have learned after going through years of just fear and anxiety of going to hell or losing my salvation and just everything that I've been through, everything that the enemy has taken me through, what I have learned is that, you know, the reason I talk about the enemy so much is because, well, he first gets a but hold in through false gospels. And the Bible talks a lot about that. Um, that's how he gets people in religious bondage. That's how he gets people in fear and anxiety. That's how he tries to affect your relationship with God. Um, 
Because remember, I've said that um, what we're taught about God and what we hear about God shapes our views and perceptions of him. And a lot of time, those views and perceptions of him shape like our experiences of him. They affect our experiences of God. And because this is spiritual, these teachings that we hear when we hear false teachings, you're like fighting kind of a spiritual battle. The, the spirit of error, essentially, it's a spirit of error. And that really tries to latch on in your life. I'm speaking from personal experience. But this is why we see in the book of Ephesians, it says... It talks about um, the whole armor of God. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For ye wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, <clears throat> take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, we're going to break this down. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. What is the truth? It is the word of God, the sword of the spirit. What is the truth? But Jesus also says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. It is knowing that, you know, Jesus is the only way. It is not by our works that we are saved. It is all about Jesus. All the glory goes to Jesus, that he is exalted, that he is lifted high. That's how we can know that these false gospels that backload works, um, that don't speak your eternal security in Christ, um, they don't exalt Christ. It's all about your eyes being turned inward on yourself where there is no rest. And this is why Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So he says, stand there for having words going about with truth. So knowing what is the truth, right? And Jesus says, ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free and who the sun sets free shall be free indeed. Jesus has already set us free. We have freedom in Christ. What does that mean? It means we, we, we've been saved. I would say that the cross is where all our hope, all our rest, all our freedom is found in Jesus. And the cross, we have been set free. Any dead works we've been trusting in to save ourselves, we have been set free. From. Why? Because Jesus saved us. As we read in the book of Hebrews, he himself purged our sins and sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. This is why it says, you know, in, in Hebrews 6, one, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. And it talks about in the book of Galatians, um, it says it says in Galatians 3 it talks all about this it says it talks all about faith faith Abraham believed and it was counted unto him for righteousness it goes back to faith right what believing the gospel um he says in Ephesians 3 2 um O foolish Galatians, who hath bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ hath been evidently set forth, crucified among you? This only would I learn of you, receive ye the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Are ye so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are ye now made perfect by the flesh? So, you know, he's reminding them. They receive the Spirit by the hearing of faith, not by their works. 
And whereas they be they begun in the spirit, right, through faith, are they now trying to be made perfect by the flesh through their striving, through their works? And it says, verse 6, it says, Even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. He's trying to remind them of their hope in the gospel, right? It says in, it says in Galatians 2, 4, And not because of false brethren, unawares brought in, who came in privily, despite our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. What does it say in the book of Galatians? It says, Galatians 5, 1, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. What is the yoke of bondage? It's the, it's the law, the yoke of the law. We have been set free from it. Because the law is a schoolmaster meant to bring us to Christ. The rest found in Christ. That's why when we see, I promise I'm going to go back to this. When we see it talking about putting on the whole armor of God. That's why when we see this. And we talk about these gospels that try to backload works. Instead of you knowing the security found in Christ, that turn your eyes inward on yourself. These teachings make you turn your eyes inward on yourself. And there is no rest found in yourself. You will only see how sure you fall of the holy perfection of our, of our glorious Savior. And this is one of the things that we fight as Christians. We fight these false teachings that try to come and they try to steal our liberty, our freedom found in Christ. And because it's a spirit of error, because it's spiritual, it's not just us trying to intellectually resolve this. It is spiritual. It's one of the reasons, you know, it talks about putting on the whole armor of God. And it says, you know, having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. What is that? It is his righteousness, knowing that we've been imputed with his righteousness when we have put all our faith in Christ. And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. What is the gospel of peace? That we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through all that he has done, it is the gospel of peace. It is not the gospel of fear. It is not the gospel of bondage. It is the gospel of peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Right as it says in Isaiah, it says, For I know, excuse me, Jeremiah 29, 11, KJV, it says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith Lord, thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you an expected end. And we had just heard that God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. So that confusion, when it feels confusing, what is the gospel? Do I really need works? How many works do I need? What kind? When it feels muddied like that, we can know that is not the gospel. That is not the eternal security in Christ. But those are the false teachings that try to come in. They try to steal the liberty you have in Christ. They try to get you to turn your eyes inward on yourself instead of our eyes being on our Savior. And all the glory going to Jesus for all that he has done on the cross. He himself purged our sins. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. And it says, above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. The shield of faith, a faith of belief. It's by grace through faith you have been saved, not by works lest any man should boast it is the gift of God. And it says, and take the helmet of what? Salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So I kind of went off on <laughs> kind of somewhat another topic, but I just felt it coming out. So I just wanted to share that. 
I don't know if there's anyone on my channel that has heard different gospels talking about trusting in your works. I want you to understand what is happening on a spiritual level um, through these false teachings. I wanted to give as much scripture as I could. I want you to understand the love that God has for you, that you don't have to live in fear and anxiety of losing your salvation like I did for so many years, thinking that was normal, thinking that was true because of how scriptures have been twisted and taken out of context and because of the kind of predominant teaching that is taught in Christianity. And I want you to understand the real love God has for you. I want you to understand salvation slash eternal life is a free gift that he offers because that is how much he loves you. And I want you to understand you come as you are and um, he wants you to receive that gift, but you, you receive his free gift by his grace through faith by believing the father as well as all would see the son and believe in him and he will raise him up at the last day that's what you do you put all your faith in christ that he has saved you from your sins and he um keeps you you are held secure in his hands as jesus has no much to pluck his sheep out of his hands nor his father's hands and I want you to understand that relationship you have with the Lord that is secure. You come to him just as you are, knowing he loves you, knowing you are accepted in the beloved, as it says in the book of Ephesians, because of all that Jesus has done. And that you come to him and that all your rest is found at the cross and all that Jesus has done. This eternal rest you have in Christ and you come to the Lord just as you are, knowing he loves you, knowing he's always waiting in his love for you. As he teaches you his word, as he teaches you who he is, as he shows you his love. But that you would know the security, not only of your salvation, but that relationship that you have with the Lord. And so I thank you guys so much. I love you guys so much. I really hope this video helps you a lot. I know it's been so many things, but I'm just going to let this video be posted. Even though I was trying to stay on like one topic, I feel like it goes together. But I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a really happy Thanksgiving and God bless all of you. Um, I can't find my mouse, so <laughs> there we go. Love you guys. God bless you.